The Godfather, Coda, The Death of Marco Corleone is the new definitive edit, newly restored and newly re-edited by Francis Ford Coppola himself. And yes, I just read the back of the Blu-ray because why not? It is right there. Uh, and apparently this is like his new, uh, or not his new, but like it is a new version of an older film. It is supposedly uh, Coppola's original intent for the movie. Um, even down to the actual title, it was never supposed to be called The Godfather Part 3, but instead it's going to have this ridiculously long name that doesn't really make any... Okay, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But as you can probably tell, um, this is kind of a disappointing thing for me. But yeah, it, it, it used to be called Part 3 of The Godfather, uh, but now it's called Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone, as if... I don't know why he made it that. I don't... I don't know this uh i have some things <laughs> to say about this movie it was never that great of a movie to begin with okay every i think everybody knows that um it is not a i don't think it's a travesty as so i've come across people uh before i even saw part three who like i i mentioned godfather part three and they like shuddered and they're like mm. Let's not talk about that. And like, they're just like, don't watch it. It's horrible and everything. And then I watched it uh, over the summer, actually, for the first time. And yeah, it's not amazing. It's definitely not as good as the first two. Um, I think that's obviously the general consensus of part three. But compared to a lot of movies that come out, especially nowadays, um, part three is not as bad as a lot of people say it is, but it is certainly not great. It's really not even that good, to be honest. It's sort of just like, it's all right. Um, it has a lot of good moments in it. Um, I'm talking about the original one because then I'll get to Coda here in a second. But it, it has a lot of good moments in it. Easily the two best scenes, in my opinion, of the whole movie that just automatically come to mind are the scene where Michael is confessing his sins uh, to the priest. It is amazing acting. And it's what I wanted the whole movie to be. I loved uh, the idea of, you know, Michael sort of going over what he's done in his past um, as the godfather and everything and sort of feeling regret and guilt and, um, you know, all that stuff. And it's, it's a really fascinating. It could have been a really fascinating character study of a guy um, who was so evil and everything. Um, my dog just came in. I'm so sorry. Say hi, Rose. Hello. <laughs> the second best scene in the entire movie is uh, the conversation between Michael and Kay. Uh, near the end of the film, they're just having dinner together uh, by themselves, and it's they're in Sicily, I believe. Um, right after uh, he tries to woo her back, which is sort of a weird choice. It felt like a romantic comedy, to be completely honest, and not really... I mean, I mean, take Michael Corleone for for a second. I mean, you've seen if you're watching this, you you probably have seen the first two, and you know what he does in those movies. I'm not going to go into spoilers between uh, the first two or this one, really. I'm just going to you know whatever. But like, you know what he's done, and you know that he's not the greatest guy in the world. And this movie sort of right off the bat tries to make you feel bad for him. I have a major problem with that. Uh, to the point where in that scene, when he's trying to like woo Kay back and trying to make her forgive him, it comes across really silly. It comes across as like a romantic comedy scene where the guy tries to win her back and it's like, what what are we doing here, Coppola? What what are we doing? What is this? And he even like disguises himself as as the driver and like but it's just really weird. It just comes out of nowhere and it's like this this guy, like I said, you've seen the first two movies and you go into this one and there's just so many weird choices that they that they made. And that's in both that's in both films, both edits or whatever. And it's just it's just odd. Um, even though, you know, those two scenes, the scenes where, the scene where he confesses his sins to the priest, 
and when him and Kay have dinner and she starts crying and he's like, will you forgive me and all that, they're great, great scenes full of amazing acting and everything. It's just what's around it is very odd. And okay, I will go into one spoiler and it's something that we all, all have a problem with this film and it's still in this film I wanted it to be cut out, but it's not. Um, I don't know. I, nobody loves the cousin incest in this movie. It is weird. It takes you out of the movie. I don't understand why it's in the film. I really love him. He's your first cousin. Then I love him first. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? And I, it was one of those things where I, when I heard about this new edit of the film, I was like, well, maybe he's gonna either, he's gonna either do two things. He's either going to somehow make it more believable. I don't understand how he could have done it, but this is the guy that made Apocalypse Now and the first two Godfathers, so I'm like, anything is possible. Um, he was either gonna do that or just cut it out really completely or whatever. I don't understand how he could have cut it out completely, but, you know, cause it's kind of a major plot point near the end of the movie. But like, it, I, it, I don't know. It was, I wanted him to do something more with it to sort of like say, I'm sorry for this really weird love interest. And uh, he didn't, no, he did not. Um, but let, let, let's go into uh, what he did change. He changed, obviously, um, if you guys have been reading up on like the news stuff about, you know, this whole thing, you, you know that he did two major changes and some small changes throughout the movie. Um, the small changes I didn't really see, um, maybe it's cause I've only seen part three once and I didn't really want to watch it again. Um, and then the, uh, the, the major changes, sorry. Um, the major changes that he made is that he made, uh, the beginning of the movie completely different. Uh, there was a scene that comes in like 40 minutes, like almost close to an hour into the movie and the original part three, and he just slaps it on the the beginning of the movie. And to me, it felt lazy in a way. The, the movie started and you hear the amazing Godfather theme uh, and you're like, okay. And then it says uh, the Godfather, Coda, and then it says the death of Michael Cole. You know, and I'm like, all right, this is cool. It's different. And then out of nowhere, it just felt like, it, it felt like he went into a software you could get on your phone. Now, don't get me wrong, you can do a lot of amazing things on uh, your phone, you know? Phones are capable of so much, but it felt like he like had the whole movie sprawled out onto a, uh, an editing software, and he just went clip, 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 and then he was fine with it. Like it just, it was weird. It, it just, it started and I guess you could say, I've heard some people say that it gets right to uh, the meat of the movie. I don't think it does. Thinking back, um, I remember actually kind of loving the beginning of part three when I watched it for the first time because it kind of uh, leaves off right where part two, not leaves off, but it like alludes to something that happens at the end of part two. Again, no spoilers, but like, it begins and it's ominous and you're like, okay, I like this, you know? This, in this edit, it it doesn't set up the story all that well. I, I don't get it. And then the ending, he said that he drastically changed. And, and again, he didn't really drastically change it. He just like cut out a couple of flashbacks that happened at the end of part three and only kept one of a certain somebody that you know you know, uh, the, the fate of this character at the very end. And again, I like the original ending. It had more flashbacks of the people that Michael knew in his past and it kind of wrapped up the entire trilogy better. So 
this, I am, I am, this is the first time that I've ever done this, but I bought a movie two days ago. I am taking this to disc replay and keeping part three because this is worse. It's, I'm sorry, this is, this is just worse. It is not a better film. The, the restoration is amazing. It's, it almost looks like it's, it's in 4K. Um, but it's just not good. It's not. Don't waste your money on it. Um, if you, if you rent it for like four bucks, maybe. Um, but even then, yeah, I, I didn't love it. It didn't make any, it didn't change my view of the movie. It actually made me appreciate the original part three even more, which is really bizarre because I didn't love that film. And now I'm starting to think that that part three was actually fine the way it was. And, you know, and I'm just like, I don't know. It, it was, I was very disappointed on this because I am usually, usually 99% of the time, I am usually so pumped when I hear about um, a movie that originally didn't do well with the critics or the audience and then you hear whispers of like the studio and them tampering with it and saying we want this this and this and it's like it's not the director's true vision and then years later you find out that there's like the director's cut and the new what the what the original uh, vision of the director what he wanted or he or she wanted and I'm always so pumped when I hear about that kind of stuff because I'm always on the side like I said, 99% of the time, I'm like always on the side of uh, the directors because um, as hopefully a future director myself someday, I don't want anybody messing with my vision. I, I would hate for me to, you know, get a script or write a script or something and then start to direct it and everything and then have the studio go, no, we want this, this and this and you can't do anything. Kind of like what they did with uh, David Fincher's Alien 3. Um, now I haven't yet to rewatch or uh, to watch his, uh, the, the special edition that adds like 30 minutes to the movie. I am excited about that. Maybe I'll do a video on that when I come around to it. But I felt really, really inclined to talk about this because it is something that as soon as the movie ended, I just sat there and went, that did nothing. That did absolutely nothing for that, for that movie. Um, this new edit or whatever, it, it felt lazy to me and it feels like quite frankly, a cash grab which is so disappointing because Coppola is worth, or is um, capable of so much more than just a cash grab. And I know he's 80 years old and he's kind of bored, especially like this year, he's at home and maybe he just, he was like, oh, maybe I'll just go back and re-edit one of my movies. But like, I don't know, it it just, the the payoff was not amazing. And it just, like I said, it felt like a cash grab to me. Ugh, so disappointing. Coppola, what are you doing? Hopefully, I don't know. Stop messing with Apocalypse Now, too, man. I watched all three. No, I didn't watch Redux because I heard that that was the worst one. But I did watch the final cut. And I love the theatrical one so much better than the final cut. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll change my mind at some point. But he's. I've heard that he's beginning to turn into like George Lucas and like Ridley Scott and like going back and, you know... Nobody's as bad as going back and tampering with their own stuff as George Lucas is, but, um, and I guess Ridley Scott had a reason to go back and tamper, I guess, tamper, make better with, uh, the original Blade Runner and, uh, what was it? uh, Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut, especially the roadshow version of Kingdom of Heaven is magnificent. If you ever get, um, the chance to watch it, it's fantastic, um, but uh, yeah, the, to end my to end my uh, thoughts, not good, not good. I uh, Coppola, if you're watching this, uh, mea culpa. I'm sorry. Um, I I didn't love it. From one artist uh, to another, you know, I'm a amateur film critic. Whatever. I just I didn't love it. And uh, just stick to the original part three. Don't watch Coda. Um, although I do like one more thing, sorry, I know I keep on rambling, uh, but one thing that I do like the idea behind, uh, this movie is that it's not a part three. It's kind of like an epilogue to the first two. 
Um, and I like that idea, because when I watched part three, it, it doesn't really, in Coppola's defense of making this, it doesn't really feel like a part three. It just feels like, kind of like this thing where uh, you hear, you ever hear, like, I don't know, you hear about, like, you know, evil people, gangsters, I guess, in this in this aspect, and you're like, I wonder what they did, you know, that you know that they were bad in their 20s and 30s, and then you heard that they lived to be, like, 80, kind of like Al Capone or something like that, um, and you're always like, I wonder what they did when they were older, you know, that kind of thing, but you're not really that interested because it's it's just not interesting because they're not young and they're not evil anymore. It's the same way that I feel about part three and, and this one too. Um, it's just, it took, I don't know. There's a lot of problems with part three, the original one, but somehow this is worse. It's amazing how we made it worse. But, uh, but yeah, that is my official thoughts on The Godfather, Coda, the death of Michael Corleone. Um, what did you guys think about it if you have seen it? Um, do you feel the same way? Do you not feel the same way? Do you think that I should rewatch it and give it another shot? All, you know, whatever. Um, I probably won't. I, I did it. I was sort of serious when I said I was going to sell it to disc replay, but I probably will keep it just because it, it, it's a, I do like the cover of it. It's a gorgeous cover um, and it looks good in my collection, but um you don't know, it was just disappointing. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, and, uh, and as always, uh, thanks for watching.